Well, the restriction versus de-restriction debate rolls on, and we've actually been quite taken aback by some of the comments on the video we put out. So in today's show, we're gonna be looking at the whole business of de-restriction. Wow, well, restricted versus de-restricted has really generated a lot of comments here on EMBN. And what it actually uh, highlights is how muddled the whole subject is and the need for clarity between mountain bikes versus motorbikes. And I'm left with, I've left it in two ways, really. I'm, on the one hand, I'm thinking, wow, there's some great points here. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I'm thinking, what a load of utter nonsense, Chris. Yeah, definitely. I think it definitely opened my eyes up to what sort of how big the audience is here on EMB. And we've got the guys on the mid-drive mountain bikes, and then we've got the guys on the throttle assist, big batteries, big motors, and then also about what people's ideas of what e-biking actually is. You've got those exactly. guys doing proper mountain biking, and there's guys that are doing, you know, more roady sort of commuting stuff as well. Exactly. So. And when it comes down to when it comes down to, you know, is 25 kilometers an hour too slow? I think mm -hmm. it comes down to uh, several points. It comes down to the surfaces, mm. comes down to the gradient, comes down to what power mode you use, comes down to your fitness levels, and of course it comes down to such things as your tire choice and your bike. Because let's face it, uh, if you are on a flat road, yeah. it is easy to get to 25 kilometers mm. now quite quickly. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's almost like a break there. However, if you tilt that gradient only slightly and you ride in eco mode, it's very difficult to pedal past 25 kilometers an hour in eco mode on a slight gradient. Definitely, right? yeah, I totally agree with you, yeah. Yeah, so I think from your comments, and there's been uh, a lot of them, I think we've distinguished maybe five main top, uh, topics for conversation. The first one is why is the speed limit different between countries and should the speed limit actually be consistent? Mm -hmm. uh, talking about land access, then of course talking about mountain bike versus motorbike, which is a big one. Uh, and what trails you ride in, the environment you ride in. And finally, uh, what about such things as power rather than speed? Should that be a topic we should be looking at? Okay, let's kick things off then. Should the laws actually be changed? We've had this one in from Carl Cook. He's saying, if the limit was raised from 20 mile an hour from 15 mile per hour, 70% or plus of people who do restrict their e-bikes wouldn't feel the need to. Well, there's actually a poll being done by e-bike smile community, which explores the whole business of de-restriction mm -hmm. and uh, some quite interesting results, Chris. It seems yeah. that uh, there seems to be a consensus that if bikes were limited to 20 mile an hour, people are quite happy. Whereas be... if it was like 25 and 30, there's less demand for that. Yeah, I totally agree with those guys. I think that's what the new limit should be, 20 mile per hour, I'm all for it. Crikey. <laughs> We say that, Chris, but I think a big subject that comes out from the discussion below is the need for clarity between mountain bike mm -hmm. versus motorbike. Definitely. And uh, obviously that's gonna have a big impact, uh, not only on well, who rides the trails, but what trails we can ride. And also there seems to be a confusion here between um, e-bikes and e-mountain bikes. You know, e-bikes are used for more for commuting, so road use, mm -hmm. and then there's the off-road use. Obviously, there's two different rules for each, right? Totally, there's, yeah. there's, there's road speed limits between mm -hmm. different countries. But I think the industry is really sensitive about this whole business of land access. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people below in the comments that, that advocate going 50 mile an hour on single track, which Crazy. is which which would probably leave us in a situation where we've got no land access at all, right? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, Dave Webster is one character who's yep. uh, waded in. Yeah, he's saying, uh, hello, uh, the laws are stupid and need writing properly. This is what they should have covered before doing an actual pros and cons video of different motors, power, battery, and throttle types. Yeah, well, I think you're suggesting that we should have covered uh, you know, high-powered uh, S Pedlex, and we, we, have, we do this on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. I think we're quite clear in where we stand on, on mid-drive versus S Pedlex on the channel. Thomas Varga is actually saying, de-restricting the e-bikes is working against us for our long-term interests, and at the end of it, it'll f us all. <laughs> When you buy the e-bike, the 25 kilometer assist is well known, not something that is imposed after the purchase. If you want to ride, uh, if you want to ride faster, pedal harder, just like the riders of regular bikes would do without any assist, or buy an S pedlek and use it as a moped. I think I think pretty wise words. Bang really. on, I think. Yeah, I think totally. he's absolutely bang on. Yeah, yeah. If you want to, yeah, we ride motorbikes, mm -hmm. and if you want to go faster, yeah. if you want to go faster on the road, go and buy an S pedlek or a motorbike. It's yeah, as yeah. simple as that. Definitely. Yeah, we're talking mountain bikes, Chris. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Um, the next one is, where do the laws originate and should they be changed? Well, it seems the Japanese are responsible for uh, e-bike laws because they, they came up with e-mountain bikes many, many years ago, but it seems to be a hangover from, from that past. However, mm. um, one man in Kazakhstan can enlighten us a bit further. The reason e-bikes are restricted to 250 watts is because the European Parliament feared that people would bypass the safety measures. The reason why e-bike manufacturers refuse people access to the software was to prevent tuning. Yeah. And every time you do restrict an e-bike, you prove that they're right. So I hope tuners enjoy a low wattage bike with proprietary software because this is what they created. This is why we can't have nice things. Well, I mean, you can have nice things, mm -hmm. but if you want nice things, you're gonna have to ride on private land because you simply cannot take them uh, on public land for all those high speeds. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting, the likes of Bosch and Shimano, uh, you know, you rightly, you cannot change the power output on those bikes. Whereas other bikes such as TQ, TQ Motors, you can have a bike that does 25 kilometers an hour, or in fact, you can have a speed pedelec which does 50 mile an hour plus. So That's you can imagine mm -hmm. the conflict of interest on, on, on single tracks and fire roads where people are walking their dogs. Yeah. There's got to be, there's got to be a point of yeah. cutoff, right? Definitely, I, yeah. It's just way, way too fast, 50 kilometers an hour for a, a standard bike, you know, e-bike on the trails. So the whole question of should the speed limit be consistent between countries, uh, this from Rock Slim, who says that I have both a 25 kilometers an hour bike and an American 32 kilometers an hour bike. The 32K bike is really much more reasonable. It's not faster than many fit cyclists would be able to do, and it's not mental enough that it'll break your chains or drain your batteries in one climb. It's really quite reasonable, even for bicycle paths. Bang on the money. Bang on the money. Mm -hmm. we leave, it? Well, we should leave that at that then. Chris, I want to move on to the whole mm. subject of the type of trail you ride. And yep. it's, it's about horses for courses, right? I mean, uh, Danny Tarplett from New Zealand has an interesting point. Yeah, he says, it's a pity your regulations restrict you to 25 kph. In New Zealand, we're allowed 32 kph, which is a really good speed. You notice this on single tracks when you have a short downslope and a climb out, the few extra kph makes a big difference, allowing you to keep your flow on the power. On the 25 kph, it was like uh, towing along a concrete block behind you. I know well, that feeling. Yeah, but look, it comes, it comes back to the point of, of the gradient on the surfaces, right? Yeah. If you're on a slight gradient, I think it doesn't matter anyway. But do you know what I was thinking, Chris, was that our colleagues on GMBN, mm -hmm. when you're going down downhill sections, we're probably doing 50 kilometers an hour anyway. Easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, like, you know, road colleagues in GCN, they're, they're probably doing average speeds mm -hmm. of, of 20 mile an hour. So why should, so I, I'm kind of, with you when you say it should be 20 mile an hour. Yeah, but I think well, even on a, a restricted e-bike, you know, you can easily flow above that speed on the downhill section. It doesn't hold you back whatsoever. No, the main things that are holding you back on a, re a restricted bike, mm. probably you're braking, you know. Yeah, exactly. If you're gonna roll down a hill, it's gonna be no quicker, so. Mark Huskisson uh, says, if the mid-drive motors don't drag so much when you're above the limit, I don't think anybody would really bother to do a restrictor. Mm -hmm. But I guess that depends on each motor. Yeah. Um, but maybe if the software offered enough assist to overpower the inbuilt resistance in the mid-drive system. Interesting. interesting yeah. Places like Spooky Wood at Glen Tress in the UK mm -hmm. uh, are much more energy sapping on an e-bike. I find flattish downhill is the most frustrating. Yeah which I imagine is the motorway section of Fort William would be quite a good case in point. If you speak with manufacturers as part of your series to find out if it would be illegal to offer enough power to neutralize the inbuilt drag. Whereas now you, there's a man who's thought about it. Yeah, he has thought of a lot about it. But as you said, I think it's definitely down to motor choice. There are definitely some that I notice are way, way more restrictive over the limiter, whereas some of them you can just literally keep on spinning, don't notice any more resistance than yeah. a normal bike. Uh, Bug Boy says, hasn't the idea of mountain biking always been about endurance? Well, I have to agree with him on that. Do you? Well, I do. I mean, I, what, what's your feelings on it? I think mountain biking differs for every single person out there. Right. It does it for, you know, people get away from the stress of work, people go out there to could be out there with nature, people go out there to train, people go out there for fitness. It's just such a wide, you can't just say it's, it's for one point. thing. But when it comes back to the speed limit, which is what we're talking about, mm. all those trips we've been on to the Lake District, mm -hmm. to Anoida Peninsula, to those big climbs mm -hmm. of me and you done, the yeah. slab mm -hmm. or the rock, yeah. at no point did we actually worry about speed limits, right? No. We were, it actually did not hang us, hang us back whatsoever. All those were done on restricted bikes, weren't they? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We could rattle on forever about this subject. It's a massive topic, mm -hmm. but I want to finish off with a few points. Yeah. Um, do you think there should be a separate classification? Uh, we've not talked about power on these e-bikes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and finally, is it really as black? It can't be black and white, right? No, totally. And I think uh, Johnny Lemon thinks there's a conspiracy theory going on. <laughs> He's saying uh, he thinks the motorcycle and the moped lobby are worried about losing sales. I think they're just mainly unsure about how to classify them as there's a gray area. Is it a bike or is it a motorcycle? Well, it's neither. So in my opinion, rather than trying to fit it into a category that already exists by limiting it, they should create a new category. Yeah, maybe worth thinking about. Yeah. Uh, on the subject of power, Ola, Ola Bratton says, I really hope the new laws could allow a 32 to 35 kilometer an hour rule worldwide. Most people wouldn't consider de-restricting them if that was the case. Mm -hmm. And I also hope we keep to the power of 250 watts max. Before I bought an e-mounted bike, I thought, differently, but now I see 250 watts as plenty. Of course, our bikes aren't just 250 watts, they're sometimes up to 700 watts on the Rocky Mountain or 560 watts on the Specialized. Totally, and then OBC wrapping things up, he said, this shouldn't be a case of all or nothing versus old fart. There are situations on every ride where the speed restrictor is inappropriate for the environment. Yeah, which actually brings us round full circle back to where we were. To what we talked about earlier. It depends on the gradient on the surface. Mm -hmm. But Chris, what are your feelings on the whole business? Everything, 20 mile per hour, e-bike, limiter, done, <laughs> I think. Right. I guess it comes down to where you live. I mean, unfortunately, I live in the woods and I rarely ride forest roads or, or tarmac roads. Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty much in eco. On, on technical climbs, so I think maybe you need to move into the hills, Chris. Now, it wasn't so long ago the Frenchman Christian Taifer set the world land speed record on a Peugeot mountain bike uh, down a mountain, and uh, it seems recently that they've signed up Nico Lau as part of their e-mountain bike race team. Now, Nico Lau uh, is one of the most successful enduro racers of recent history, and he's now racing e-bikes, Chris. It's cool, isn't it? It's really cool to see Peugeot coming into it with their big financial backing, one of the first car manufacturers coming into it, so yeah. maybe we see some other guys Well, do you know in. what? I think car manufacturers understand the importance mm. of e-bikes. Uh, I was in San Francisco late, late recently, and Ford, and Uber, Uber have got like a jump e-bike mm -hmm. city centers. So right. I can see the car manufacturers had really switched on to this. Uh, now last week, Race Coast Cycles in Stourbridge in the UK uh, launched a Turbo Levo store, which might seem like local news, but it does have a global importance because uh, when recently I visited uh, Specialized HQ mm -hmm. in California and I asked them about you know their strategy when it comes to Turbo Levo. Now, it's quite interesting when I visited North America that they're actually quite behind when it comes to e-mountain biking. Right. So it's quite it's, it's interesting that the UK and Europe is actually leading the way with e mountain bikes oh, because this cool. will probably be a model for future not just Levo stores mm -hmm. but maybe e bike stores worldwide. Oh, right. Yeah, super cool. So what's been going on out there in the big wide world, Steve? Instagram, social, lots of things kicking off. Did you see this fire? I didn't see the fire, but what I have seen, uh, when we recently did our bolt-on uh, e-bike motors, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine has got a caravan, right. and it's called, his wife calls it the bomb shelter, simply because if you've got homemade e-bikes, mm -hmm. you could have really, really good battery management systems. So imagine. I'm not sure if this is a homemade bike. Mm -hmm. It looks like a, it looks like, it looks like an off-the-shelf bike. But, it's pretty bad, isn't it? Uh, fireworks, I was only driving it's down annoying. the motorway this morning, it said fireworks available from South Wales Transport. Really? Uh, talking about on fire, uh, Hans Ray uh, recently did uh, just dropped a video called Transnapoli, uh, coming oh, out of a volcano. Mm -hmm. it looked really cool. Check that out. He's on his e-bike as well as his standard bike, mixing it up. Um, so Yannick was out in Utah. Yannick in good who? Shape. Yannick Granieri. Okay, right. Free rider, Sam yeah. Pilgrim's teammate. All those guys out there on high bike, big one foot table. Looks super stylish. Um, and Nico Queer as well. Uh, he recently won the EWS E. Right, class, enduro class out there. He's been shredding it again out in the mud, practicing for the next round out in Switzerland. That's coming up 4th yeah. and 5th of May. Chris, we need to get some entries in. Well, I'm glad to say that sheep chasing is not just a Welsh phenomena. And uh, got this really, really cool video in from Denmark. Chris, who's yeah. it from? It's from Magnus. He's out there on his Trek Powerfly LT9, absolutely shredding. Check it out. Yeah. Do you know what? Uh, at the Sea Otter Festival, it's interesting that there was loads of e-bike high fleets from Intense and Specialized, and there were so many kids riding e-bikes. I really? think it's time that some of these big manufacturers started making uh, e-bikes for smaller kids, actually. Yeah, definitely the smaller stuff. Yeah, um, and I think it's gonna happen. Kids. And look at this, just out on the beach, riding along the beach, power, you know, effortlessly. Imagine trying to do that on a normal bike at his age. 
good effort. But if you guys keep sending those videos in, it could be you on next week's show. Use the upload service. Details are on screen now. Now this next week, uh, we're gonna be off to Lake Garda in Northern Italy to check out some of the latest European e-mountain bike tech and bikes. Uh, it's gonna be quite interesting, Chris, because it's quite different in Europe mm. than it is to North America. Lots of little brands. Bigger so, scene over there, isn't it? I, yeah, totally, different far more. Style, so uh, tune in over the next seven days uh, from the Garda Bike Festival. It's a really good way of supporting what we do here on EMBN is by checking the shop out. Loads of cool stuff in there. Look at this. They've got some red t-shirts in there. I don't know if you tops. noticed that. Um, um, you loads. two can be matching. <laughs> Race shirts, hoodies, you name it, it's all in the EMBN shop, so be sure to check that out. Okay, it's bike ball time. Anyway, let's kick things off. We got this in from Mike, and he's sending his special those Levo. He's at old Harry Rocks. Not far from here, actually. Yes, it is. It's miles from here. No, it's not. Old Harry rocks. Uh, Harry does rock, though, doesn't he? And I think that shot rocks. Uh, I like the fact that it's under the horizon. I'm going to give Do that a super nice. Nice, giving it off super nice. Oh, look at the colours, Chris. Come on. Matthew, he's got his Merida E160 out in Bruce Ridge, Canberra, Australia. That is one of the nicest shots I've seen. Sunset shot there. Beautiful. Come on, Chris. It's got to be super nice, right? Yeah, give yeah. him a super nice. Boom! Oh, smashing it through. Side on. Stefano, he's got his Villier, Tristina A E803. It's, it's oh, in it's Tuscany there, mm -hmm. in Luca. That's a beautiful place to ride e-bikes. That's almost super nice. They do some high-end uh, uh, road bikes as well, don't they, Villier? Didn't know they did e-bikes, actually. Chris, does my face look bothered? Mm. Can't move on, it's almost a super nice. Nice. Ooh, Ooh nice. horizon going through the bike. Mm. From Not water, too much light. cube stereo, hybrid 160, he's out at Old Kilpatrick near Glasgow. Walter, that is close, but you know, a bit more light on the bike. Mm, yeah, nice. Whoa. Oh, I love it, love it. This is in from Mike, <laughs> again, a Merida E160. Oh, sorry, I thought it was yours, I thought it was you. It looks more like you. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his uh, Merida E160, he's out in Fox Creek in Southern Australia. Yeah, come on, come on. It's gotta be, isn't it? It's gotta be. Super mm. nice. Cool. Uh, this one in from Bill as well. He's got this 2019 Levo and he's got a trust fork on the front of this, so like a linkage carbon fork. As Hold well. on, he's in Santa Cruz, California. Wow. It looks super, it looks like the wheelbase is really long with that fork. So that's a 120 mil fork and a 150 mil bike. Mm -hmm. I'm... We're talking more about the photo, not the bike. What are you thinking? I don't know, Josh, is... the time it's is nice. ticking, the time nice. is ticking. It's nice. nice. Ooh, nice. Oh, come on, don't turn your back to us, Chris. Chris <laughs> is in Grisdale, but not looking at the camera. Dominique. He's got an EMBN top on though, right? Or is no, that a GMBN? GMBN. Put your glasses on. Uh, he's, got, uh, he's got two spectral ons out in the Lake District, Grisdale. So where's your partner or your hubby? He's probably taking the picture is my guess. Uh, and hubby allowed me to take a back seat. Sorry, the wrong jersey, but hey, it matches his bike. True. Nice. Nice. Ooh. Kevin has been sending his high bike Estuary Hard 7 Hardtail in. He's out in Peterhead, Aberdeenshire in Scotland. Went exploring and found some cool new trails. I like that. It's nice. I it? think I'm almost on a super okay. nice for that. Mm. Do you think? Super nice. Frank with his Bulls E Stream Evo 4. He's out in Wetzlar Hessen. Is that Germany? I think so. Sounds German to me. It's nice. Nice? Okay, moving on. That's Wales, I know exactly where that is. Go on then, where is it? Uh, that is either Talbont or Elam Valley, I think. Second answer is right, Elam oh, Valley. Oh, boom! Um, it's from Paul on his giant trance SX Pro. I think I did one of my first ever mountain bike rides up there, way back in 1988. But I won't reminisce. This super the end nice. of the bike vault with a super nice! nice. Keep sending those bikes into us using the upload service. Details are on screen. Could be you in next week's Bike Vault. Okay, now if you want to stay with us, don't forget to tune in to that video which we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. restricted versus de-restricted. Let us know your comments, not just on what we talked about today, but on the video itself. And if you don't want to miss a video that we do here on EMBN, click the globe in the middle to subscribe to EMBN. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's show. Drop some comments in the box below about your chat on de-restricted and restricted. And see you next week from Lake Garda in Italy.